Hey what's up guys it's Oakley and we make a return to massive battles this time it's going to be a 3 versus 3 massive siege Eastern Roman Empire facing off against the Sassanids trying to hold on to Tessaphon and you can see here basically one of the main Roman armies is going to be making a massive push on the walls with these huge siege towers rumbling in all along this front and so our defenses actually are on escalation 1 so you can see them already having taken some damage on the approach here. Um, we're going to do some nice pans as you see this. A couple of the siege towers seem to be getting bogged down on the terrain, but nonetheless the rumbling mass of siege engines is going to continue to move forward and we'll follow them as they make their approach up to the walls. Yeah, now let's pull out and see the rest of this force. So like I said, a lot of these siege towers, but this isn't going to be it for the Roman defensive force. They actually have way more units over here, a couple catapults over in this vicinity, and each of the armies is basically going to be equipped with a couple catapults. And there you go, like I said, Escalation 1 means that a lot of your um, sort of um, defenses as the defender obviously are going to be pretty heavily damaged. There will already be pre-existing holes in the walls oftentimes, and then your towers will already actually be heavily damaged, which is maybe a nice counter in certain cases because otherwise these sieges can be super powerful. And that one is going to go down soon. But let's see if we can't get a nice little cinematic view of the towers moving up here. And this is another little addition I really hope that they carry over um, to Total War Warhammer. It's the devastation in front of Siege Works. Like this, that really implied that a long siege has been taking place uh, for the city itself. In this case, you know, a lot of um, sort of arrow emplacements here where you could shoot and maybe cover yourself as you make the approach with this battering ram. So I thought that was a really neat um, thing that they did with Attila, and I hope to see that continue. Anyways, we're going to put this on pause real quick just so I can show you strategically what's going on. Like I said, over to the south basically is the main Roman push. And they have the huge siege tower line coming up here. And they're going to take this wall. This is going to be the main Roman assault. And they do have a couple catapults over in this position. Um, and then Eastern Armored Legio and Pike's going to push and clear out that area. Over to the left is going to be a huge Roman flanking force. That's going to be another army. This one's going to push through here, hit the towers with their um, catapults, and then start hitting us in the flank with some of their um, siege equipment, and then try and take us out. So basically batter us from all fronts. And then over in the rear, over here is an entire other army, and this one is going to be with Hatiara guards, all tripled up, you know, gold, gold. Um, these guys are going to be very strong, a lot of those numeroids. So this is going to be the heavy-hitting Roman force, waiting for our attention to be drawn out to the front. Then they're going to hit us in the back. Now we have set up some defenses. We didn't really want to contest this portion of the city it was too vulnerable so what we decided to do was pull back hold the little island here with some armenian spears and then have some slingers to pick at the opponents slowly but surely if our opponents try and come across the bridge i can draw here if they try and go across the bridges what we can do and what we will do is put armenian slingers in this position here and then what we can do is shoot them it doesn't draw over water but you get the impression we can shoot those guys on the bridge as they take it so that is our strategy and then meanwhile over here you can see my allies are kind of defending the inside I am gonna be on sort of external guard duty and trying to stop the opponents from the outside now let's go ahead and watch the first uh, you know men to breach the walls they must have been promised some sort of uh, promotion or some sort of uh, fund because that is what happens usually with Roman armies you had to convince the troops to be the first ones the dangerous ones to be the first to clear the walls so here they go. These guys must have been offered a bonus check, like I said. Um, and here is what they're going to get. And these are the risks they have to, to handle. So here comes some of my cavalrymen. I figured I would bring a couple of these cataphracts into the fight. Um, but immediately we're going to be hit from the side for more of these attackers. So perhaps not the best trade, but I wanted to blunt this assault and allow my towers to continue to do damage. I wanted to halt this in its tracks. However, what's going on here is you can see all the archers. And all the crossbowmen are going to start firing up over their men. Already the Romans are going to be pulling out of the city. Seems like they've been scared. And here are going to be the pikemen trying to reform, come back into the lines. But yeah, you can see all the um, crossbowmen are going to start shooting up and over. So you can see that. And it's going to start picking apart my men. I've already pulled out my cavalry men because the pikes were inbound. So my cavalry is booging on out of there. And my remaining dialamite warriors actually trying to um, be engaged in the fight here. They should be able to hold out for a long amount of time, but what's happening is the crossbow, and you can see that raining down on my men, taking out a lot of them, and this is actually pretty surprisingly a good arc of fire. Hitting my men like this when they're engaged, I don't really have much in the way of uh, defenses. Preventores are going to be running in. A lot more guys, like I said, streaming into these little gaps, and uh, you know, it's only a matter of time before the rest of the force starts coming in. They've seized the gates. So there you go. And now, yeah, they are taking all that initial... 
uh, area. And like I said, they're swarming through here. Not much we can do. We just want to contend from a distance. And our opponents are going to be rather wily. And like I said, the main assault pushing through the front. Then you're going to get hit from the flank with artillery. And then a cleanup crew is going to be coming from the rear. That's the the main goal of our opponents. So let's go ahead and watch some of the, the watchtowers um, and the main wall here as the Romans start to make their approach. As the siege towers roll up. So here they go. And they don't have to contend with much, actually. We didn't put up much of a defense on the walls. Um, because clearly, had we done that, they would have just bombarded us with the catapults, neutralized our guys, and we would have lost too many men. So this Roman force here is allowed to get up on the walls. That's fine. We have more guys in the distance. Going to be trying to reform. We're going to be pulling back to this little barricade that we have set up here. So the Romans are going to form up. And my guys are trying to pull out of distance, and we figured, okay, this is where we're going to try and hold them. At these crucial choke points, one is going to be back there. Another one is going to be over here. As the cavalry try and push forward, there's a barricade to hold them back. And then some archers in the distance to try and fend those units off. Now my cavalry are starting to move forward. Uh, my cataphracts in the distance, cataphracts on the outside. I'm waiting to see if I can hit the opponents from the side, but they've got themselves pretty well defended with the Skullite Palatina. So I have to be a little worried about that. And then basically, the opponents in the distance there are going to start to make their approach. They figured, okay, we're going to ditch all the siege engines. They want to, you know, they already have tons of holes in the walls. So they're just going to pour forward um, and make their assault. Mean all over here, the enemy forces is going to, are going to start to pour forward. The catapults there, saving their ammo for crucial moments. I think that's a really good move. And put this on pause till we can get a nice little screenshot. Yeah, there you go. This is the this is the moment that I was waiting for was to have the enemy up on the walls here and archers nice safely positioned on a barricade and we're just barely out of um, range had we been in range this would have been the perfect time to, to start launching uh, salvos at the opponents and like I said here comes the catapults from over on the side a good use of catapults right there holding them off not wasting them on any more of the walls they want to use them to target our individual units here at probably the, the most crucial points of the defense now we do have the ability to get some shots off at the remaining troops here. The Numeroi, as they push forward, are going to start to get shots on. But holy crap, look at all these Romans pushing forward down off the walls. And they're swarming uh, Tessaphon. So we've been giving away sort of the outskirts of our position. That's fine. They can take the outer rim. And this is kind of how a lot of sieges would have gone, especially multi-stage cities with a lot of defenses. Especially you take, for instance, the siege of Carthage. Uh, would have been progression of the Roman armies through the city of Carthage, finally cutting their way through, securing different areas. Um, another one that comes to mind is the siege of Jerusalem, where the Romans had to take the outer wall, clear out buildings, set up base camp in the sort of flattened um, lower areas of the of the city and then they would finally push their way undermine towers slowly push their way and that was a very very brutal long-lasting siege and it seems like we're getting a little bit of um, I don't know lag in this game usually that's not the case my computer can handle most things I it must be something with all of the burning and uh, the number of units in this game uh, testify it's not handling it super well so apologies for that but you know I think nonetheless it's pretty epic the Romans are gonna start to try and form up and basically they have nowhere else to go but charge straight through our barricades, which is exactly what I wanted. This is where I can funnel the Romans into position. And what we're going to do is form up into shield wall. And this is a beautiful, beautiful opportunity for my guys. You can see my Dialamite Warm... Er, are these Dialamite or Soggain Warriors? Dialamite Warriors, yeah, they can, they can hold out against these guys pretty well. And then basically my archers here, positioned excellently on top of this barricade, what they can do is actually fire just above the... Um, sight lines of my men and shoot straight to the Romans so the Romans are going to be getting destroyed meanwhile we're raining fire on the troops in the back and I'm gonna to switch to heavy shot actually with my archers pretty soon I actually have another reserve force which is gonna be these nafta throwers so if enough of the opponents start to place themselves up here that I'm gonna come in with some naft uh, bombs and blow those guys up okay meanwhile over there you can see the enemy forces are pushing forward with pikes so that's forcing my cavalry to push back, and what I have to do is bring those pikes out into a position where I can sandwich them from both sides. What I'm doing with my cavalry over there. Meanwhile, the enemy is slowly pushing forward. You can see them starting to get taken out here. Eastern Armored Legios taking some hits as they move to destroy our barricades. And then over there, some more Eastern Armored Legios taking out the barricades with some ballista, uh, Ballistari support. 
over here they are also charging forward so they took some damage running over our traps but for the most part you know not too bad they took out the towers not too much to be worried about over in this position like I said we're gonna set up our slingers over on this embankment some of my slingers Armenian slingers who are actually really good troops they can take a big hit with their massive shields they do a lot of damage have a lot of ammo and they can hold out pretty well they're gonna be forced however to pull back because I mean look at the amount of damage I was just starting to take um, from the enemy catapults who are still within range for my guys and I, re I realize you know if I don't pull back now I'm gonna be um, sandwiched by these committed tensive spears and I didn't want to risk losing my um, very crucial Armenian slingers and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my guys over here and uh, try and block these guys and allow for my units to retreat let's actually watch my nafta throwers as they come in and get into the fight these guys are very crucial I think for these types of engagements especially in the close confines if I can keep them out of range of the enemy um, crossbowmen and whatnot they'll prove very very good so here they go they're gonna be taking out some of their um, I'm not actually sure how these pots work they seem to have like uh, timers on them almost like grenades but these would have obviously been jars filled with um, naft or sticky tar um, I guess exploding on impact or something like that but uh, yeah very very cool I guess an ancient not exactly a Molotov cocktail, I don't know how they did the um, sort of the, the way to, to ignite it, but anyways, it's super interesting, and I definitely wanted to use them in the battlefield, so my, I was a little frustrated, my guys are kind of shuffling their feet, but it looks like, there we go, they have some of the NAF bombs in their hand, and I just want to make sure I get that, uh, that sight for you guys. Hmm. Oh, no, no, okay, looks like they, I think they're reloading, I think we may have missed it, yeah, I got an explosion off on the first unit, and so now... They're kind of resting themselves, reloading, and then they're going to throw into this um, Numeroi unit. And you can see it's actually pretty heavily destroyed. That other one back there actually destroyed pretty handedly as well. Put this on pause just to show you what's going on over here. The enemy pikes are going to be coming into position, and I decided to charge in with my journal's unit. Into the infantry. I know the Roman strength is their infantry, and I want to make sure I can knock out as many of them as possible. Just tie them down, allow our towers to do a lot of damage because um, towers have kind of an, um, the best, they're a little overpowered, but basically every shot is going to hit someone, almost every single one, and then those shots that do hit do a lot of damage. So it's not only a matter of, you know, trading my guys cost effectively with the opponent themselves, but if I can get tower support, it actually ends up being pretty fruitful. Over here, the enemy um, have confronted our archers who moved out to try and delay the action, try and take out the enemy armored Sagatari, who otherwise, let's see how many kills, 72 kills, and they're going to get maybe, I think, like 200 kills by the end of this. We want to get rid of the enemy ranged units, which would then allow us to hold the front with Armenian spears and all that, but it seems like this is not going super well. Over here, my spears are going to have to turn about to try and hold back the committed tenses and the elite, but sorry, they're going to start raining in on my guys. And it looks like my naf throwers did their work. We missed it again. Sorry for that. But the Dilemite Warriors are going to clean that up. However, in the distance, a ton of Romans. So, going to have to reform. Let's put this on pause so we can go ahead and watch what's going on over here. The enemy, like I said, it has swarmed through here. They've ignored our Ar Armenian spears. Where they're going to be going is right over here. And I have my Armenian spears in square formation. Holding up a huge number of guys, including Hetiera Guard. And that is exactly the opportunity I wanted. Take a look at our Armenian Slingers over there. They're going to be just getting free shots into these units into their flank. And now here come another, I only have two of these, my other unit of NAF throwers. And they're starting to take some damage from the opponent. So I was getting pretty scared that I would lose these guys. They're taking some hits. I wasn't sure actually who that came from. It may have been from, uh, oh, I think the Balistari got a, a nice shot off on my guys. But yeah, dwindling my numbers. And I really need to keep these guys alive because look, at this target rich environment I w I'm definitely not going to miss this for you guys so here you go my guys are going to be moving into position and there we go they're going to take out their NAF bombs and there we go a couple of them are landing in and amongst the men you can see them on the ground here comes the time delay <laughs> that's freaking brutal so that look at the sheer number of kills we got right there that is that is awesome so especially against you know triple golded up Hetiar guard actually some of them are a lot of them are picking themselves off the ground so a lot of HP damage done there but I think it's holding itself 
uh, but I'm going to reload, try and get more damage in on those guys, try and take out the enemy general. Armenian slingers, meanwhile, getting 45 kills, 15 kills. They're going to start racking up, especially against the enemy elite balistari. But they're, meanwhile, chewing through my lines here. A couple more nice craters happening where my naft throwers are getting some nice hits in. Um, over in this position, I decide to charge through. I wanted to break through these legios, get to the elite balistari, and try and force these guys back. Doesn't seem to be super fruitful because the enemy catapults are getting into position. Taking out both of our towers and now targeting the Armenian spears. You know, my naft throwers over here were hoping to just hold out forever and do some damage to the Romans. The Romans actually came in through all, their, all of their javelins and took out my force here. So I have basically nothing left over besides just a couple of these Persian bows who are actually feigning that they have ammo. Scaring those Romans away. I mean, while just trying to hold position with these naft throwers, I'm going to pull them back a little bit and try and maybe reposition them to help out over here where, again, I'm starting to crack. Over in this position, my, enemy, my ally tried to help out with some bows to do some damage, but I just got overpowered with the enemy cav and uh, preventores, a bunch of guys just swarming my cavalry units, so I lost my cataphracts. So all my heavy cataphracts are gone. I do still have Severin Sardar. That's going to be my general. He was trying to do a, a strike on those Hetiara guards. However, I'm a little scared of these guys. They're facing my way with their throwing axes. They should be able to do, it, do damage. So I'm going to be playing kind of a game of chicken with them around this corner. But that's fine. You know, if they don't want to move forward, they'll be taking damage from the tower. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Meanwhile, Cavalry is going to be running around here trying to do, do, do damage to our guys. I think my ally is trying to bait him into the Caltrops. And the Cavalry guy is not going to fall for it. So, should be to our advantage. However, the fight is now basically done on the outskirts. The enemy forces are pushing through over here. They've basically destroyed our position. And they're going to be cleaning up all the outskirts. We've yielded the outside. And now they're going to be moving in with their some of their artillery pieces being still alive. Oh, looks like my uh, naft throwers are going to clean up the rest of this force. So my guys definitely being nice cleanup crews in the alleys. And holy crap. Wow, wiped out that unit. Most of them, but they're, they're going to get up, but they're going to be pretty much shattered. Yeah, they're going to be running away. So, when the Armored Secretary are out of ammo like this, yeah, this would be a perfect opportunity for my Naftharos to run in and do more damage, but the lurking cavalry is pretty scary. And a lot of these infantrymen here could pour in through here. So, the days of my Naftharos being alive is severely limited. Over in this position, I did sort of break some of the committed tenses spears, but more of the enemy numeroi. Very elite troops are going to be fighting my guys, holding me back. And meanwhile, my allied Kurdish archers are going to be trying to pour in, but against elite balistari at ranges like this, the elite balistari is going to win. Over here, I was not able to crush through the enemy forces. They continued to throw in spears and heavy infantry. That means I have to pull back, so I'm going to be withdrawing my Sogdian warriors. And our position is going to be collapsing here, like I said, this bridge with the thundering Roman force, with led by Hatsiara guards, cavalry, heavy infantry, all gold, gold. Not much we can do to this. We tried to hold them back with the Armenian spears, and I'm going to be throwing in some slingers, just anything to try and hold these guys back. It is not going to go very well for us. They're going to be swarming through our guys. My naft throwers, you know, got a nice amount of kills. You can see the, holy crap, the sheer amount of blood that was done by my naft throwers. The slingers over there that did a lot of damage to them. But nonetheless, the army is going to be cruising on through. We destroyed this elite by the star unit you know, uh, up opposite us. Let's see how many kills we have. 104 on those Armenian slingers and 81 on those Armenians. They're going to be pay basically sacrificing themselves into this force uh, to delay, allow my Armenian spears here to hold out a little bit longer. You know, all my Sogdian warriors are going to be pulling back. Over in this position, we've essentially lost <laughs> the outskirts again. So it's going to be falling back to the Citadel at this point. And get some nice pans of the city as we start to lose all of these various corridors. The archers here are now caught out in an awkward position. I don't think they're going to be able to get out in time. No, they're getting a couple more volleys facing the Romans pretty boldly. But yeah, our guys are, are absolutely destroyed. That force is going to come streaming across the river. That's an entire Roman army right there. Not much we have left to hold out. A lot of defenses here, but not much in the way of bows or elite infantry. It's all going to be spears, which can hold out for a while, but we're not going to get many kills in the process. So if they, they if they take out our towers and we have no way to, you know, deal with the fact that, yes, we're drawing out the fight, but we have no way to deal damage, then it's just going to delay the inevitable. And these, these stairs are going to be, you know, painted red and blood. So we're holding up pretty effectively 
Our archers seem to have exhausted their ammo, so we're going to hold the Romans here. But they're throwing these look like Preventories, yeah, the cheapest troops to tire us out. Wasting their cheap troops, trading with our guys, and slowly chipping away at our forces. I think at this point I have lost basically all my men. Let's take a look over on this right flank. Yeah, only my general is left standing. The enemy forces are going to be sallying out and attacking this position. Some of my Armenians are going to try and run all the way around the city. Pull back over here and try and reinforce this position. And maybe even help take out these Romans. But you can see once these two towers are alive, like I'm saying, this is one of the only places where we have towers still alive. And this is where the delaying tactics will work. I mean, look how much damage we're able to do to these Romans just standing here. Every second we get about, you know, two, three kills um, just holding them here. Go into shield wall and we're good. And then these Caltrops are going to be even more useful for preventing cavalry chargers where they can't really push through here. And we actually have some archer ammo. So this is one of the few remaining places where we should do pretty well. Yep, there goes some archer volleys. And it looks like they're going to be targeting some of the Hetiara guard. Ooh, wow. I didn't see that coming. That was my general coming in here, trying to flatten some of these eastern armored legios. And then I'm going to pull through to get some of these balustrae. I really want to take out our opponent's ranged units. However, the Hetiara guard is going to be close on my tail. They're going to be charging after me, and these guys do, mind you, have throwing axes. So every time, you know, I disengage and they click another attack order on me, they're going to be able to throw their axes. Speaking of those, you can see them in the ground here. They're going to be doing a lot of damage to my general, so I really desperately want to keep him alive. But I broke Ballastar unit. That's going to be a godsend for our forces on this side. And then I'm going to charge through and hit this catapult, with, which still has ammo. I want to take those guys out too again. Like I said, keep our watchtowers on this side alive. That is the only thing keeping that force here from crumbling. I figured, okay, if we can rally this side, we have a lot of men left over. We can then sweep through this side, clear this out, and then we can face this um, entire enemy force uh, combined and just see where that gets us. We have a lot of units remaining. Some of our uh, spearmen here seem to be throwing their javelins into the mix. But I don't think it's actually doing us that much good. It seems like most of our javelins actually ended up destroying our guys who were in <laughs> the line of fire. So that is not good at all. And these are mortals nonetheless. Those are very, very tough troops that we would love to throw in the fight. And it's, uh, it's a shame that their javelins actually missed. Let's see if we get another volley of those javelins and see Kind of do some detective work, see where those are going. Yeah, it looks like some of them are going up over. I can't really tell how many bodies are on the ground for the Romans because they have just so many troops here. But yeah, they're going to continue to push through. Basically throwing a sledgehammer at us. The Hatiara guards with 124 kills. These guys, 16. Hatiara guards with 85. Even the Onager crew is in here. And the Magister Militum with 30 kills basically leading the forefront of that battle. And against Armenian spears... These guys are okay, but they just can't hold out um, against the heavy killing power that we have thrown against them. If I had some additional naft throwers, holy crap, this would have been perfect. You know, two, three of those guys would have destroyed this force. But I don't think our enemy would have allowed that to happen. I mean, you can see how many uh, elite Sagatari, uh, Sagatari, and then also... Um, crossbowmen they brought into the city they probably could have targeted our guys from a distance and these guys all the while we've been defending have been pouring on fire into us um, 17 kills on those guys um, there's another one with more I thought 63 yeah so they, they're definitely racking up the kills elite plus sorry 122 yeah so they have enough firepower even if I had enough thirst to take us out but it wouldn't uh, would have at least helped even the odds they're gonna be swarming around the backside my general over there in the distance finally gonna confront the Hatsiara guard but the enemy general is going to crash Magister Militum against me and actually take out my general. So the city, basically, outer perimeter has been lost. And now we're hard pressed. Even the defenses here have cracked up through the front. And now it's going to be up to the immortals to try and hold out. We have kind of a staggered uh, defensive line right there. Most of our immortals, I think, are staying out of range or trying to stay out of range of the enemy Bellastari. But I think what they should do is really commit to this because what's happening is we're getting completely surrounded. Immortals are great from the front. They have heavy armor, high shields, all that stuff. But the second they start getting surrounded, like you're seeing here, that is not going to be good. So this uh, force is wrapping around the sides. And individually, these uh, immortals are going to be taken out super easily. But yeah, here goes another one. They should really all form up and attack um, together in a massive line. They actually probably should have 
held up again with the Armenian uh, spears in the front. But the second that bowed out, look at all these Romans splaying out and attacking us. Some of our Armenian spears rallying, but not really, really having it in them to fight longer. More of these Roman forces in the distance coming in. And then actually the enemy artillery, very, very um, smart of them to hold those guys to the end and do damage to our guys. We're bringing in some of our Armenian reserves. These guys are held back, but I would say they should really commit to the fight and try and hold those guys back because the second the Romans can outmaneuver us, get into this area and outmaneuver us, that's where they can take out our spears much more easily. And look at this wave just crushing through our guys. Let's actually watch some of this. I mean, the, uh, the destroyed statues, the artillery coming in. It's going to be the end of the Immortals. And geez, the sheer numbers is what's, I think, causing the lag. And they've got a nice, oh, this is a, a cute little move. What they're trying to do is protect their forces as they deploy on the plaza. So they've gone into a nice little shield wall here for the committed tenses, guarding the flank as more of the legions move and form up. And I think this is where they're going to place, yep, you can see um, archers. So they're going to form a defensive position, come in and crash in our guys. Like I said, however, the left is holding out. My Sogdian warriors still survive, so this is my last remaining unit. In the distance, you can see my general broke, so we lost that. But uh, yeah, we should be drawing away more guys here, but that's why our opponents brought a couple more of these Protectores Domestici to keep our guys you know, locked up here, prevent us from moving over in that position. And even on this side where we still have one tower left, that's going to be going down. We have nothing left. But, I mean, same with our opponents. If we had a couple, again, Naphthors or Sogdian warriors or Dialamites, we could break this. I mean, they're... they're throwing onagers and armored secondary into this fight we could probably take this out I just I think my allies the army composition was not just not there they had too many spears and archers and not enough heavy hitters um, to really um, you know stand out against the Romans who clearly went all out for a rush with infantry which is obviously what they're known for and in a siege like this yeah you can swarm through not much we could do to hold that back so definitely a fun siege nonetheless um, and the last stand in front of the final building, the capital, Tessaphon, is going to be going down. Um, its fate is pretty much sealed. I don't have to try and pretend that this is going to go our way. Um, it's only a matter of time. But yeah, some of the shots, flaming shots coming in. I think by the end of this battle, the building is going to be burning. The plaza is going to be taken. And now actually, let's, let's get some nice cinematic shots as the Romans charge through. Through the grass, the holy plaza. The grassy site here they're gonna tread across this area that was reserved for princes and kings and now they're gonna come and they're gonna slaughter everyone so there you go cleaning it up and this huge hatiara blob coming in consuming everything the last of the immortals holding out here trying to delay the inevitable but yeah they're gonna be destroyed from the front the hatiara guard having brutal charges against these guys and then more of the artillery crew actually getting their last final volleys. And there you go. Yep, I think we missed the shot that did it. But there you go. That is going to be the final hit. Even in the distance, the last of our guys who are trying to hold out that bridge are going to be taken up at the Legios. And then over here, archers still elite Ballastari with remaining shots. I mean, if that if the infantry wasn't enough, I mean, this would probably be able to take us out. And they, they don't even know where to shoot. The infantry is outpacing the support. It doesn't matter. They're going to be charging everywhere. We can see Roman cavalry in the distance coming through the main plaza, going even through the short little um, ponds here, cleaning up our guys, and they're even going to start taking out the main plaza. So this is a disaster on all fronts. I can't even keep track of where our units are. I think, yep, that's why. We don't have any left. And this is the last hope of our guys. Our allied general going to try... Severan Sadar move through there. He's going to get hit by his own caltrops as he tries to flee. But these guys, yep, slowly are going to be turning about to try and meet the Romans. They are, you know, hard-pressed uh, to hold this front. And then they're like, oh, I wonder what's going on on the other side. And this is what they're greeted by. A huge wave of Romans at their back. And yeah, that that, that plaza is going down. So I really like the, the Siege of Tesfun. I think it's a really cool siege. I, I don't know. It, it was a fun battle. I think... The odds were probably against us from the very start. I mean, with the amount of siege equipment they had, they could take out all of our towers. And then there was no real way for us to answer the sheer amount of infantry they had there. Perhaps, um, I don't know, it's hard to do with the um, the unit composition that the, um, the Parthians have. <clears throat> Not the Parthians. Sassanids have. They don't really have too much hard-hitting infantry. They're 
you know, excellence in the cavalry department, I tried that, and it didn't so much work in the tight confines, especially with the um, sort of missiles that they had in abundance, the catapults, Sagatari, Ballistari, the precursor javelins, they could basically destroy our cavalry, and there's no way for us to outmaneuver them. So they're going to straight up fight. Yeah, not much we can do in this case. And maybe that's reflected in history. Um, Tessaphon, I think, was sacked. I, I mean, no, I know it was sacked at least once. I don't know how many times. Um, but yeah, Roman forces definitely made their way to Tessaphon and were able to take it out. But they weren't without the reverse reversals. Uh, you know, of course, the famous um, destruction of the Romans uh, on multiple occasions, most notably by, you know, the expedition led by Crassus, where he was eventually killed at the battle of not Cannae, but Carai. And maybe I'll do a, a, a video focusing on that, where he led a force. I think it was a 40, 50,000 men in the Parthi or not, it wasn't the Sassanids at that point, it was, would have been the Parthians. Basically destroyed them with, I think, uh, a convoy of 15,000 mounted horse archers and cataphracts. So maybe we'll cover that. So that's definitely where the Eastern factions excel. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this battle. Apologies again for the slight graphical issues we're having. It's not running super buttery smooth like it usually does, but nonetheless, I think an epic siege that maybe oversaturated uh, the game's ability to render it. So anyways, leave your suggestions below for what you'd like to see in the future. Let's go ahead and look at some of the stats for these battles. Just to see Naf throwers paying for themselves, I think, pretty handedly. Especially this 191 kills against heavy infantry. Doing work. Archers getting, you know, a good amount of kills. And I wish you could see the total number of kills here because I don't think my allies ended up doing very much. This guy, Archer's getting no kills. Elite Immortal should definitely be getting more than that. Armenian Spear is doing nothing. Emiliano doing okay with the Archer Department, but again, Armenian Spear is just really not being cost effective. I mean, I had a couple. Yeah, you can see here they really didn't pay for themselves. They, Our allies should have brought Sogdian and Elite Dialamite Warriors, Naphthors, even uh, Cataphracts. I said they weren't effective. They still got 122 and 111 kills. Frozen Men, on the other hand, getting a lot with the Elite Ballastari, almost 200 on those guys. Infantry doing work. Trigon here, I mean 189. Cavalry getting a lot. And then over here, yep, Cleaning House, the Hatiara Guards, those guys that I was trying to, you know, warn you about. I mean, 323, 246, 102, 126, 63. Yeah, that is the meat of the kills right there. And that was that third Roman force that charged in through the back and kind of cleaned house and burst through the final defenses. So a cool strategy from the Romans. Pretty historically accurate, I would say. Um, hope you guys enjoyed, and leave your recommendations for what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out.